Unexpected. Had I been made aware of your arrival, I would have mustered the troops for inspection. I'm not here to inspect your men. I see. Then to what do we owe the honor? How long have military operations in Alfheim gone on now, Georg? Eight? No, nine years? Nine years to see the Emperor's, my father's, will done. And somehow, victory yet eludes us. The Emperor wishes to convey his impatience. He desires results. To that end, I come bearing the burden of command. By the Emperor's will, the invasion of Alfheim continues under my supreme authority. Your Beowulf now obeys me. I'll hear objections. I have none, Your Highness. We of Beowulf, the Knight Sanguine, have thus far failed in delivering our Emperor his conquest. If His Majesty has seen fit to grant us a second chance, though undeserving, we humbly accept. Enough then. Let's not speak of apologies and humility. Instead, let us speak of plans. As I transition into my new role as Commander, I admit confusion on a matter I'd like explained. This boy, the alleged bearer of the Shining Dragon. I've reviewed all your compiled intelligence, and yet... Not one report in the lot mentioned the dragon at all. Not even in passing. Explain this to me. We judge that information unfit to be reported on, Your Highness. Not worth reporting? Surely I misheard. The mightiest of his kin, a legend amongst even other dragons. You mean to tell me the discovery of the Shining Dragon himself doesn't even deserve a footnote? Perhaps it's best I let the man I assigned to it explain. Joachim? Yes, yes, a perfectly understandable query. We heard rumors the child possessed the Shining Dragon, so we acquired him, yes. We've since spent a great deal of time observing his growth, but sadly we were unable to detect the Shining Dragon's energy signature. He still was able to channel pure dragon energy on his own, however. I was in the midst of running tests for that at the time. So hopefully it's clear why we chose as we did. The official reports are reserved for confirmed, verified intelligence only. 
Hmm. I see. I'll remember your discretion as I conduct my new duties. Still, the Shining Dragon. Can this power of mine tame even you, I wonder? Hey, we talking about the Shining Dragon in here? Like the special mythical one? Is he really all that? Zest, you're late. Care to explain yourself? And show some respect. I'll not tolerate your lip in the presence of Her Highness. Already crawling up my back, Georg? I'm not gonna be rude. Promise. Hey, Princess. You brought your Draco Machina with you, right? So between them and the Shining Dragon, who do you think is stronger, huh? Between the Shining Dragon and my three spears? I cannot say. He fled before any true test of strength could be had. But the spears have already communed with me on this matter. They prescribe caution in dealing with him. Nothing more. I see. So he might actually be fun to play around with, is what you're saying. Like if your big fancy machina aren't up to snuff. Zest, I told you to mind your tongue. What? Just calling it like I see it. Zest! Fine, fine, I'll just go. Later. Georg, who was that man? Ah, uh, oh, Zest. Yes, my strongest lieutenant. Strongest of all the Knight Sanguine, in fact. I see. Less fortunately, he has a certain temperament. As his captain, I regret to report his mood swings are... difficult to work around. Hmm. I thought I felt a measure of power in him. If he's as unruly as you say, that is misfortunate. Well, no matter. I have concluded my business here for the day. We'll continue planning on the morrow. Thy will be done, Highness. Before you go, though, Beatrice? Standing by, sir. I couldn't help but notice you didn't bring your retainers, Highness. Please, I would have you employ Beatrice instead. You'll find her capable. My name is Beatrice. It will, of course, be my pleasure to serve your Highness. A bender of shadow? How fascinating. Very well, Beatrice. You may accompany me for the duration. Thy will be done. With me, then. Let's be off. Let me guess, before you start. Don't leave her side for even a moment and make sure her every need is seen to. Something like that? Something like that. a dream which means this is back then please I know it hurts but you can't move oh no 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 if you're in that much pain oh I know I'll cast a spell to numb the pain all right just hold still a moment longer here goes ready That's right. I remember now. 
That girl, she... That girl, her name, why can't I... remember? Marga, your radiance, the royal capital of Astoria. I see. And you're a. Kirika, right? Kirika Toa Alma of Wellant. I'm also known as the Diva Magica. Please, call me Kirika, your radiance. Alright, Kirika. Nice to meet you. Diva like a singer, right? That song before. Just what is a Diva Magica? Oh! Originally, we were translators, I suppose. Divas once acted as bridges between men and dragons, communicating will and whim. When dragons still roamed the world, there was peace. They spoke to us, taught us, sang to us in their ancient rune songs. Though the dragons are gone now, and the skies over Alfheim are empty, we divas still play the songs in remembrance. A new Diva Magica begins training from a very early age, not just to master rune songs, but draconic lore, historical texts. That's how it was for me, anyway. I applied myself to my training, but it always felt... off. Empty. But then I met you, Your Radiance. I always knew you returned to us. That's why I've been studying, playing my heart out, and... and now you're really here! Uh, my apologies, Your Radiance. I allowed zeal to overcome me. Please, if I may serve you in any capacity, only say so. Uh, okay. Kirika, you know I'm not actually the Shining Dragon, right? My name is... I understand, Master Yuma. Perhaps not in fleshly form, but in spirit, you are the Shining Dragon. Okay, I'm the Shining Dragon. We'll go with that. Honestly, I'm just, I'm just glad to have someone, someone looking after me. Good morning, Kirika. How's he doing? Oh... Oh, he's awake? Mom! Mom! And that was Primula. Her mother, Emma, runs this place. Uh, the Seagull Inn, I should say. Oh my, good to see your eyes open, dear. You gave us quite the fright when you wouldn't wake up, you know. I... I did? Um, thank you for looking after me, ma'am. Breakfast is ready, so why don't you come down and put something in your stomach? Oh, and the princess is here. Best not make her wait. The princess? In time, Your Radiance. I think you'll understand after you two have spoken. Good morning. You had a rough night. Were you able to rest up? Hmm. What's wrong? You seem confused. I, uh... She said I was supposed to be meeting a princess down here. So, does that mean... A prin... Oh, for the love of... Hey, Emma. I told you not to call me princess in town. Hmm? Oh, right. I forgot. Sorry, dear. Hold on. You're... No way. You're a princess? Uh, what? Like it's that hard to believe? Here, why don't you let me introduce myself? Sonia Blanche, Crown Princess of Astoria and firstborn to the royal family. Pleased to meet you. M my name is Yuma Ilvern, Your Highness. It's a profound honor to meet you. Hey, nah, -uh. none of that. No highnesses. Just call me Sonia, okay? You got it, but uh, what's the crown princess kicking around a regular old inn for? Well, excuse us for being regular and old. We're the top inn in the city, thank you. And we've even got Dragoneer staying here. <laughs> Easy now, Primula. But she's right. I live here as the Dragoneer's caretaker. Dragoneers? 
that's what Excella and Kirika are, right? Are you a Dragoneer too? Uh, no, not personally. It's more like I'm in training to become one. Something like that, anyway. So, um, Yuma, weird question, but can we talk about your plans from here on? Your future? Sonia, I think it would be better if the king explained. We should escort his radiance to the castle before anything else. You're right. Can you come with us for a bit, Yuma? I'm a little uneasy about all this royalty stuff, but it's not like I can refuse the people seeing to my every need. Okay, wherever you want to go, point the way. Welcome, Sir Hugh. I am Albert, King of Astoria. Thank you for making the journey to my humble hall. Yes, sir. Oh, come, Sir Yuma. No need to be so stiff. Actually, if I may call you simply Yuma? Sure, that... that's fine, um, sir. Very good. Now, Yuma, I'm sure you have some guesses as to why you're here. The, um, the Shining Dragon, right? Then we're all on the same page. That's the short version, yes. However, let me first assure you of your freedom in this hall. Unlike the Empire, I have no intention of holding you against your will. You alone will choose whether to lend us your aid, and you alone will decide what shape that aid takes. That being said, if I may be so presumptuous, I would ask you for a particular kind of aid. The Shining Dragons if it's yours to give. For nearly a decade now, Astoria has slowly bent and buckled under the Empire's boot heel. We're locked in a bad stalemate, to be frank with you. Marga's fortifications have seen that it remains standing for now, but we cannot place our faith in the walls forever. Then there are refugees fleeing occupied lands, and the poor souls left behind. They are my subjects, and I their king. I am duty-bound to protect them. I understand. I've seen the Empire do some terrible things out there. When I was at Galeritz, I saw... cruelty. All kinds of inhumane experiments. Will you help us? With the Shining Dragon's power, Alfheim could be free of Imperial influence. I want to stop them too, I really do. But I can't use the Shining Dragon's power to do it. It... it's too... To what? It's not like he's evil. He helped me and Kirika, remember? No, no, not evil. It's more like... Ugh, then make a decision, why don't you? What does his power even mean to you, huh? It, uh, w well... Answer me! This is all about you, so why don't you say something? If you've come this far just to clam up, ugh, I don't understand you. Sonia, enough. Yuma can hardly make his own decisions when you lay the pressure on so thick. What? No, I, I didn't mean... Ugh. No, I'm sorry, Yuma. None of that was right of me to say. Please excuse my display. You know I don't mean to embarrass you in your own hall, Father. And Yuma, can you forgive me? I know you have your reasons, so if you don't want to use your power... No, it's okay. I should be the one apologizing. Mm. In the end, the fault lies with me, I think. You did, after all, just escape from Imperial Prison. Perhaps I was wrong to push for answers when you've been left with only questions. Shall we take a break for now? A moment to think with clear heads would do us all well. You are dismissed, Yuma. Please, take whatever time you need, see the city, and return with your decision once you've made it. Fair? Yes, if you say so, Your Majesty.
just a pinch of... Oops. Just a pinch of... Welcome! What are we making? Welcome back. There's someone here to see you. Uncle Burroughs, this is the boy I was talking about. Ah, about time. You're our dragon boy, then. The king filled me in. Call me Burroughs. 
How are you holding up? Uh, hi. It's, uh, nice to meet you. Oh, forgive me, Yuma. I should have mentioned. This is Burroughs, captain of the Knights of Astoria and an old family friend. Captain, if you're making a visit to the Seagull, that must mean you've got work for the Dragoneers, right? Right you are, my lady. A hunting contract. Seems something big is out terrorizing folk beyond the walls. What, a monster? More than your knights can handle if you're asking for a Dragoneer to deal with it. Well, the Knights of Astoria... See, we've got our hands full with something else right now, so... I see. By all means, then, let's petition the Dragoneers! Hey, Sonia. There are other Dragoneers besides Kirika staying here, right? Three of them, all told, yeah. Kirika and two others all use the Seagull Inn as their base of operations. And when the Throne doesn't have official contracts to offer, they go around assisting the people of Marga instead. There's not a soul in Marga who can't tell you a story about a stout-hearted Dragoneer. You can always rely on them. Astoria owes generations of peace and comfort to their protection. By playing their harmonics, they can channel special magic and perform feats far beyond other people. All to keep the peace, of course. Harmonics? Is that what you call those instrument weapon things Kirika and Excella were using? Mm-hmm. Long ago, the shining dragon inside you gifted them to the ancients so they could protect themselves. There are supposedly seven harmonic armaments in all, three of which are here in Astoria. The elves of Wellant have another three. And the last one's in the care of that imperial princess. Wellant? Oh, but isn't that Kirika's homeland? What's she doing fighting for Astoria instead? Well, Astoria and Wellantine relations are peaceful. The Elves' ancestors lived here a long time ago, so we've been allies for generations. At any rate, I should go and see about this something big. You stay here where it's safe, Yuma. You're going all by yourself? I can't just demand a Dragoneer's time without doing any scouting first now, can I? It's my duty to aid them in my father's place, you know. Be that as it may, my lady. Maybe take Yuma with you all the same, just to be safe. Me? <laughs> don't worry, Captain Burroughs. It's just a scouting op. You don't have to be so protective. Uh. Emma, could you make Yuma some tea? I'll be back before it's cold. Ah, my lady, wait! And she's gone. Emma, why didn't you stop her? Now I have to figure my plans out all over again. Plans? What in the world are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Yeah, I didn't say a thing. <clears throat> now, how to fix this? Hey, Yuma! Little coward, are you letting the princess totter off into danger all on her own? Huh? B but she said she was just scouting, so... No excuses. Get after her right now, boy. Hop to. Wait, why? Why do I have to do this? I'd do as he says, Your Radiance. Sir Burroughs is a very stubborn man. Arguing will only make him grumpier. <sighs> fine, fine. I'll go. I'm going. Allow me to accompany you, Your Radiance. If we hurry, we should be able to catch up before Sonya reaches the gates.
Welcome back. Have a nice day. Hello. How's it going? Excuse me. Let's go with this plan. Take this! 
plan. Let's go with this plan.
Looks like the coast is clear. Looks that way. Thank you, Yuma. You were a big help. Let's go report back to Burroughs now, huh? There's no need to return to town. We can give our report right here, actually. Ah, I've been made, eh? Captain Burroughs! What are you doing here? Begging your forgiveness, my lady. Killing monsters wasn't the only thing you were doing out here. I wanted to see Yuma and the Shining Dragon in a real fight, you understand. I see. That's why you were so adamant about this. Yep. Figured a monster sighting was as good a chance as I was gonna get. I suspected as much. Captain Burroughs! 
Don't you think that's extremely unfair to Yuma? You tell him too, Kirika, how it's an affront to the Shining Dragon's honor or, or something. That may be so, but his radiance has blessed us with his sublime presence, his holy splendor. I knew of Sir Burroughs' plan, but said nothing, so that I might lay eyes on his radiance again. I'm not certain I have any place chastising the good captain for his actions. Lay eyes on... Whatever. Fine. Fine. We'll talk about it later. Let's just head back to the castle for now, okay? And I'll be sure to mention it to my father. How bravely you fought alongside us, Yuma. Yeah.
Okay. Did you need something? on your own again, Burroughs. I don't know what I'm going to do with you, old friend. Begging your pardon, Majesty. You know how it is. I just had to see the Shining Dragon's power for myself. I understand Captain Burroughs' reasoning, and I don't think I'm gonna pass comment. Not right now, anyway. But I will say this. Yuma fought with us, and he fought as hard as anyone else. There's no need to doubt Yuma's strength. Don't you agree, Captain? Is that so? Yes, Burroughs, let's have it. What's your assessment of Yuma's performance? With all due respect, of course, I have to disagree with my lady. From where I was standing, it seemed to me the Shining Dragon was a weapon of last resort. He hesitated, flinched under pressure. Hmm? Uh, that's... Yuma, answer me. You're afraid of your power, aren't you? Afraid? You may be right. The dragon's power does frighten me, since... Since? Since... I... Ah, you've got your reasons, I suppose. But let me tell you, boy. Until that changes, you're a liability, and you'll have a hard time fighting. And that's all I've got to say on the matter, Majesty. Very well. I have no reason to doubt your assessment. What? But Father... That'll be all, Sonya. I suggest you return to the Seagull Inn and take a well-deserved rest. Am I understood? Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us. The boy fears nothing more than the Shining Dragon. It carries its soul within his breast. What a life that must be. Not exactly your typical trials of boyhood, are they? I trust you've seen the Galeritz reports by now, about the Princess Axella and these Draco Machina of hers. Unless I've missed my guess, the Imperials are making ready to change the face of this war, Burroughs. With those Draco Machina running unchecked, the Shining Dragon may well be our last hope. We must have Yuma's aid. Everything rests on that boy's shoulders. Providence help him. Hey, Sonia. Why did you talk me up like that to your dad? You made me sound like a way bigger deal than I actually am. 
Would he have gotten... Uh, mad? If you hadn't covered for me, I mean. No, no. Father's not like that at all. And I wasn't covering for you. I was believing in you. I do believe in you. Deep down, you have a brave heart. Huh? But I'm not brave at all. Yes, you are. You didn't want to fight with us, right? You were scared, but you fought anyway. That's bravery. You can always be better than the person you were yesterday, Yuma. So please, believe in yourself. Yeah. How's it going? All right. Everyone, 
Remain calm. Get the wounded indoors and into the back room. Supplies, medical supplies. Do we have any bandages left? Hey, what's going on? What happened? A dragon attack, my lady. It swooped down on us right outside the city walls. A dragon? Could it be a Draco Machina? No, I can't feel any of them nearby. Kirika, you can sense that? Yes, Your Radiance. All dragon souls emit an echo, a resonance. Diva's Magica attuned themselves to it so we might commune. If any exceptionally potent dragons are nearby, I should be able to feel them. It's a live dragon then? Not a Machina? I thought the greater dragons all died out a thousand years ago. Yes, the tales say as much, but they also say this. That long after a dragon's body and mind fade, the soul endures. The dragons died out? And something about their souls? Wait, that sounds like... Given the survival of his radiance, and the nature of the Machina, I wouldn't exactly discount the possibility of another living dragon. We're gonna need eyes on it either way! Let's get out there! Oh no, this is terrible! Emma, are you okay? Oh no, dear, it's just... Well, I hadn't seen Primula for a while, and I... I just found this note. This? Let's see. Going to gather some ingredients, back by sunset. Oh no. She went outside the city walls before the dragon struck. No. My baby girl. We'll find her, Emma. Kirika, with me! I'll go too. More eyes can only be a good thing, right? I appreciate it, Yuma. Thank you. Now come on!